99.999% of the time when people call into this thing, they like genuinely want to have a conversation or, or, or get information. But every once in a while, there's that different sort of call. And uh, in an, one of the episodes that we did last week, uh, our good friend Ryan Lake was on, and there was a sort of impromptu mini debate that I wasn't expecting, uh, uh, you know, particularly about the, the topic I wasn't expecting. And I just thought we could play some of that right now. So since it's uh, International Women's Day, my question is, what is a woman? <laughs> what is a woman? <laughs> uh, I, I, I've got an answer to that. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you want to go first, Ryan. or uh... I, you, you go ahead. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it depends on the context. Uh, I think that an analogy I find really helpful is from Sophie Grace Chappelle, who uh, says um, that, uh, you know, who analogizes words like man and woman, you know, these gender words to a uh, parent, that um, there are a couple of different definitions you could use of, of parent, and in most cases they coincide, so we don't need to worry too much about how to sort them out. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a clear biological definition of parent uh and there's a um, but there's also like a social or legal one uh that um you know so by the uh by the social or legal one right if you you know you could be a, a step parent you could be an adoptive parent you know and uh, and in all these in all of these contexts with no problem using words like mother and father for somebody, even though they don't fit the uh, the biological definition, and I think something similar is probably true about gender that there's uh, that um, that there are you know like the sort of you know adult human female or adult human male you know definitions of uh, of man and woman that is clearly one thing that the uh, that you know that's clearly one way of using these words uh, that and one that's appropriate for some context you know if you're talking about like you know women's health for example you know that might be a that might be a relevant one just like if you're talking you know but the same way if you're talking about um, let's see if you're talking about like uh, you know the test came back and you're not the father right you know like we know we know what the word father means there uh, but if it's uh, the um, the you know the report, let's make sure we send the report card to the child's father, right? You know the uh, the term means something else there, and and we would think that somebody who who didn't want to apply it in context like the second one to stepfathers or adoptive fathers because you know that doesn't count, you know. With you know, you know I, I I think we wouldn't uh, you know we wouldn't think much of that person. I think we'd probably be right. And I think something roughly similar is true here that there's a there's a sort of package of um, of things about uh, how people present themselves, how they think about themselves, how other people think about them. Uh, whether you know their participation in certain sorts of uh, gender segregated activities, uh, how they're you know how they're designated you know in in different cultural or legal ways. Can you give me an example of a gender segregated activity rather than sex segregated activity? Well, I mean, I think part of the problem is that generally activities that are gender slash segregated, sex segregated, I think it's it's contested right which of those it is. Like like is a lot. It? I, I think so. I mean, it's uh, so like an obvious example is bathrooms, right? So uh, is, you know, bathroom says, you know, women's room or men's room on it, but, um, but whether, you know, but nobody ever really bothered particularly to, to differentiate whether that meant man or woman in the sense of gender identity, whether that meant man or woman in the sense of uh, biological sex at birth uh, until relatively until relatively recently, in most cases it coincides, and it wasn't really that politicized as an issue, so the sort of contestation didn't come up, whereas in the last few years, that's been super-duper contested, right? There, there are laws that were passed in various states uh, saying uh, that it's, you know, this is, uh, that, you know, that that means, you know, that means sex, you know, sex rather than, uh, than you know, the gender. There are, there are many people who, who vigorously, you know, disagree with those laws so I, I think in a lot of cases whether something that's sex slash gender segregated you know which which of those you know which of those is the thing that it, it, it should be I mean we could disagree about what the right answer is for this case but a lot of that stuff is pretty contested I think 
Mm-hmm. Then you also talk about a social or legal definition um, of each. So can you give me an example of like a social or legal definition of woman, right? Like that doesn't rely on biology and that also doesn't rely on like sex stereotypes or misogynistic tropes about uh, makeup, hair, presentation, mm-hmm. sexual availability, um, duty to care for others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that the simplest one, uh, which I suspect you're not going to like, but I mean, the simplest one is just uh, is just identification, right? Like how how somebody how somebody would identify themselves, or you know, or how others would would identify them. I mean, that is, you know, whether that's the one that should be most relevant is, you know, obviously going to be hugely controversial. But I mean, that does seem like something that doesn't that doesn't check any of your boxes just now. Right. I mean, yeah, obviously, obviously that's not also as, as like people with like uh, philosophy and potentially history backgrounds, I was hoping for a more logical answer. Well, I mean, I don't know if, I don't know what's the, I don't know what you mean by logical in that case, right? I mean, like if, if you mean internally consistent, then I mean, what's the, what's the, what's the internal inconsistency you see there? Uh, that like if anyone that says that they're a woman is a woman, then what is a woman? What does it mean to feel like a woman or to perceive oneself as a woman? Right? Mm-hmm. Like that's completely circular. Because, right? Like what other category is so porous, so undefined that one can be simultaneously in it and not in it, and also gatekeep around it but not be in it? Like those are not, you know what I mean? Those are like fairly unprecedented like social phenomena. Yeah, I wonder about that. If that that is the only that is the only case where we'd say that um, that whether somebody thinks of themselves as being that thing is um, is all that's really relevant for their their designation as that thing, right? So I think that like um, you know, I think that at least in certain contexts, being a Christian is probably like that. Of course, there are you know theological you know definitions of of which things to believe a Christian, but those are all going to be about being black. Those are going to, all going to be hotly contested. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the, you know, I mean, obviously that one's not going to be any less controversial uh, than uh, uh, than than this one, um, mm-hmm. you know. And and I don't think I actually think that one's going to be. I think that one's actually probably going to be an interesting case for your view because it doesn't really seem like, at least in the sex case, there seems like a relatively straightforward. I mean, there are ambiguous cases and there are things that make it less straightforward, but I mean, it's going to be at least a relatively straightforward distinction. Whereas in the case of race, I mean, what's the biological definition? It doesn't really seem yeah, like exactly. there is one. Yeah. So, um, so I think that, I think that in the case of, uh, in the case of being black or white or anything like that, I mean, I think that the, how you think of yourself, how others think of you, you know, I mean, I think less we're just going to stop using those words uh, is, uh, is probably, is probably going to be it again. I think that there are probably whether you're designated uh, in some, you know, bureaucratic context, you know, like where they want to know people's religion, you know, whether you're thought of as a Christian. I mean, it's, that's not going to be based on any sort of contested theological definition. That's going to be based on you know what you how you think of yourself. Mm-hmm. So is that circular? I'm not. I'm not sure it is. I, I think it's. I certainly don't think that's. I certainly don't think it's internally inconsistent i mean it might just might just wrong to you right like if it has no if it has no borders right if it has literally no then what is the purpose of that container right it, it then it means everything and nothing and it also as materialists right like if we're leftists we have to at some point like admit to being some form of materialist yes so that means that there's no sex class, right? There's no like, there's no uh, common cause to be had among biological females that are women, right? Like, th- there's a lot of implications for that. That uh, left well, Americans who identify as progressive leftists uh, really don't want to grapple with, or decided they don't give a shit. Well, maybe I think that the I, I would resist. Uh, the leap from saying that uh, there are, you know, there are going to be biological and non-biological ways of using some of these terms to saying that it can't be true, that there are interests that everybody who fits the biological definition might have in um, in common, right? I mean, that there, there might be, 
you know, like in the parent case, there might be certain rights that you um, that you should have by virtue of being a um, you know a biological parent, right? You know that that might reasonably come with you know with certain rights. No, uh, if a whole sex, uh, like a whole class of humans, which comprise mm-hmm. roughly half the planet, are mm-hmm. not allowed to talk about being oppressed on the basis of their reproductive physiology or their biological reality, like take uh, FGM, for example, mm. fetal genital mutilation, right? Mm-hmm. There have been in the space very recently huge, huge, hot, like, screaming messages about that term being transphobic, right? Yeah, so so I think I think I would make a distinction. I think we're probably for the sake of analytical clarity, we're going to have to make a distinction between whether or not uh, it does make sense to think of gender identity as one way to uh, to use these terms, or whether there are reasons why it might be morally appropriate to use that term in this way in some context. And like every single thing that anybody anywhere in the world might say on the basis of that, right? That they have a that because uh, if if the only contention is that there are people who who make unreasonable claims, like you know it's transphobic to use the phrase female genital mutilation, uh, then I can agree with you that is unreasonable. But I I I would resist the step backwards from saying that that's a that's an unreasonable thing to object to to saying that like therefore we should just never use gender terms to refer to uh, gender identity rather than biological sex or where's Ryan you know, <laughs> never use those terms in anything other than the biological sex. I mean, I think those aren't the only options. Well, I think another option is to say that trans women are trans women, right? Like why do we need to make space like in an inclusive hey, way yeah, he comes in, 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 in a battle community? community. When, when things are very much backsliding for us globally, why is it that usually quite entitled male bodied people who experienced much of their life as men with with all of the attendant privileges right how How is it that now our entire movement is about them, including like dyke marches and and you know all kind of the pussy hat thing. Like I didn't agree with it. I hate that as a symbol, but the fact that that was transphobic and women were prevented from identifying with that, etc. Like those are hugely problematic things from within our community. So, right. If like, if I, if we can't as leftists organize around, around things that are material reality, what the fuck is our community about? Yeah. So I, I guess to me, it sounds like, those are, I mean, I, I think that there's, again, I'd want to make a distinction between saying, like, is it actually true that the only way, and you said it's logical earlier, or, you know, the only way that, you know, conforms to material reality to uh, to use these terms is always in every context to use them to mean sex rather than gender identity, which, again, I just don't think is true. I mean, I don't think it's unmaterialist to uh, to, to use the word parent uh, to you know in ways other than for referred biological parentage either. But I think we could make a distinction between that and say that like every single claim that anybody ever makes on the basis of that is is correct. That like therefore you know it's uh, you know it's it's transphobic to uh, to you know to use the phrase women's health or it's transphobic to you know to to use the uh, the pussy hats. Uh, as a uh, as as a piece of you know, pro- protest symbolism, right? Like I think that you can, I mean, by very very rough analogy, I think anti-Semitism is a real and disturbing thing in the world. But there are many many things I've heard people call anti-Semitic where I think they're just being ridiculous, you know. And it's it's not actually uh, anti-Semitic. I mean, we can we can we all know how to make those distinctions. I think we should and we should make them here. But I think really the it sounds like your issue is more uh, the sort of, you know, moral or political issue about how to um, how to think about you know trans people and and oppression that trans people have faced and whether it's the same or different. Not and, really. I mean, I'm not at all preoccupied by that. I stay in okay. my lane. I organize around the <laughs> the issues that that I face as a member of my class, including my sex class, which is biological 
females, right? And for me, a woman, because I'm not from North America, um, I was born in the Balkans, came here as a refugee from civil war. So we know what we're talking about. When we say women, we mean adult human females who survived their girlhood. <laughs> like That's what we fucking mean. And if, if you don't share that experience of surviving girlhood, Probably we can't really organize along the same lines. Now, trans rights are human rights. I'm totally going to be on it if there's an issue regarding that. But inclusion in spaces that have been built for generations by women struggling against every form of obstacle, not really. So, I mean, so, you know, build your own, build your own organizations and uh, and support networks and funding drives and whatever else, right? So, how about how about the issue? Um, uh, so, how about things that aren't aren't built by a, a movement, but are just things that already generally exist in uh, in society, like the uh, you know, I mean, it's it's. You know, like the uh, the the bathroom issue that's uh, that was mentioned earlier, for example. What's your stance on that? Uh, I have two. I have two minds about that. Like in the West, I think it's obvious that uh, for trans women who who pass and who are there literally to, to just use the bathroom, um, like absolutely, that makes sense. Like if you if you're able to go about your your daily life and nobody's going to bat an eyelash, great, do it that way. Now, I know factually <laughs> that, that that's not the only way that, that that kind of inclusion gets used. So I would like to see someone on like the, you know, on the level of uh, any leftist male activist, come and get your boys, come and get your autogynophile like dudes, come and get these, you know, <laughs> like weirdos that, that go in the women's bathrooms. Uh, because of under like you know self ID laws, they can with full beards and smearing their semen, for example, on the toilet paper roll. Like this is shit that really happens that gets posted to social media as, a, as like a form of you know engagement with feminists with turfs. I just think broadly, we want to be very careful about using those kinds of examples to characterize entire movements or characterize groups of people and. And also just, I didn't. Just, I think that there's two very separate uh, communities well, that, that's what I mean. uh, under I, that I umbrella. I, I don't even want to draw the conclusion there are entire communities of people based on based on these incidents that you see on social media. And also just which are characterized movements based on the kinds of debates that happen on social media. Did you uh, hear it, me do that? I absolutely I just, did not. I, I don't know if you're doing that or not. But I'm just suggesting as, just as a rule of thumb, like we don't want to also, like you do you that. know where that phrase comes from? Yes, I do. So um, maybe don't fucking use that. Jesus okay. Christ. Okay. Like okay. basic leftist thing. Like let's not use language okay. that was that was totally invented, literally beat women down. How about that on International Women's Day? And Ryan, why don't you answer my question? What is a woman? I, I... I basically co-sign with Ben's what Ben said initially with it with uh, the, I think there are different contexts in which uh, women is going the word woman is going to have different meanings and purposes and for the most part these overlap. Um, but back to my point about social media, I just think we want to be careful um, to draw conclusions about what the trans community is like based on particular debates that might get a lot of attention on social media. We have to remember that the person I'm not people... saying those are trans women. I specifically said that there are people that will t that will make use of those laws that probably in their everyday okay. life in no way are legitimately part of that community. That's my issue with self ID. That's my issue with that with that whole like anyone who says they're a woman is a woman, right? That also like completely um puts our like trans siblings in danger actually. No, what I was trying to speak to was certain debates that you were referring to that get a lot of traction on social media, like whether, you know, whatever, whether female jail mutilation is a transphobic term. Um, and these kinds of debates might get a lot of traction on social media, but we have to remember that it's something like 5 to 10% of people who are active on social media who are driving 95% of the discourse. It's only a small percentage of stays a whole even on social media at all. Um, so we, just, so I, I just also urge caution generally 
um, and drawing conclusions about what's animated. Okay, so you're like, you're going to tone police okay, me and like kind of message police me, but I'm not answer the question, question okay, of what is a woman? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I'm in no way policing your tone. I'm, I'm saying uh-huh. to be careful about how we characterize a group based on what's happening on social media. I was and I did, and I'm, I am, I am. Thanks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. Uh, it actually last for about 30 seconds longer than that. She just started looping back and repeating herself when we finally hit the call. But uh, the, I, I you know, want to throw to you guys for your thoughts about that. But, um, but my initial thought was um, I, I knew what she was saying with the rule of thumb thing, but I was like 99% sure that was bullshit. And I, I did, in fact, look this up later. Uh, there's an article from 1998. Uh, that uh, was uh, William Sapphire was uh, was debunking this. I think we have the um, uh, the, the graphic of that from the New York Times, um, and uh, it's it's something that's popped up periodically since then. There's the uh, yeah, there we go. This rule of thumb, William Sapphire, it's June twenty fifth, sorry, January twenty fifth, nineteen ninety eight. So uh, check that out for anybody who's uh, who's curious about that. Uh, the, the urban legend is that. Um, rule of thumb comes from like a 19th century judge saying you could beat your wife with something that wasn't thicker, you know, like a stick that wasn't thicker than a thumb. Uh, it is complete nonsense. The phrase rule of thumb was being used in the 1600s to mean exactly what it means today. Like, you know, you're measuring something like with a, with the thumb, not like a precise measurement, right? You know, you're speaking, pro- you know, approximately. Uh, but in any case, uh, that little uh, that little linguistic digression aside, I, I will say when it when it got to that, I I, I knew that um, things had reached the point where probably it was not going to be productive anymore. Yeah, I, I like the fact that she's uh, you know accusing other people of tone policing when she's uh, like seemingly tone policing you know both you and Ryan. Yeah, the, the, the thing about tone policing was an awkward fit with the uh, how dare you fucking use the term rule of thumb, this horrible offensive term that you know that it's not like everybody uses, you know, like an extremely common, normal phrase that, you know, even if it did originally, she thinks it did, which did not, right? Like, is, is a, that's not what anybody has meant by it, you know, uh, even, even in that world, right? For a very, 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 very long time. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It, it just seemed to me like, uh, I was, uh, yes, Jeb has been discriminating against thumbless people. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't, I guess the thing that did seem telling to me about that is that she asked a question and I mean, the second that, like, the sentence was out of her mouth, it's like, oh, God damn it. Okay, well, I guess we're going to do this, right? So she asked the question. I gave an answer. She obviously didn't agree with the answer, right? But I never quite got, like, you know, there was this idea that it's illogical somehow to, to answer that way. I never got what the inconsistency is supposed to be. It, it just seemed like I I don't know. I mean, like, again, I've been very lucky. There have been, like, two calls like this. The other one was somebody who wanted to let me and uh, Bronco Marketich know that we're a prudent apologist. But, like, the other than, uh, you know, this is not normally how people interact with it. Uh, but but that was just a very, very strange little mini-debate that happened there. Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually am going to stay a little bit in my lane and not try to uh, proclaim to be an expert on this. But I do find the psychology of her alienating in two respects. One, uh, I never, I mean, I guess it was kind of illuminating to hear Turf speak for, uh, if I, if I could call her that speak for such a long time, because it's very hard for me to understand the like emotional motivation behind that, I guess, other than just some kind of classic conservative, uh, viewpoint. Uh, but then the second is like, why is it like, I don't need to go on Ben Burgess's call in show and just like nail him on this. <laughs> it's like, it was a strange choice, but, uh, it's, it all led to that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, actually it, think, uh, yeah. I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect this was actually probably a fallout for the Rogan appearance because mm. uh, there was a little bit of trans talk in the, in the Rogan episode. And, and it's funny because, you know, whatever. I, I think, um, like, there is some evidence that, you know, the vast majority of leftists who, who listened to that liked it. Uh, the, 
uh, as as gross as I feel using this as a metric of anything on my tweets about it when we showed. You know. but, uh, the, the, but like out of people who were upset about it, you know, I think some of them were, who were upset about those parts didn't like the fact that I just sort of like calmly told him what I thought and why I disagreed with him instead of like yelling at him and calling him names. Um, and also I didn't pretend to have like medical expertise that I obviously don't have about like exactly what the clinical standards should be for going on puberty blockers or exactly what this, you know, a reasonable standard would be for hormone requirements for sports participation. Uh, but even though you're a doctor, <laughs> I, am a, I am a doctor, but uh, I, I, I'm, you know, that's doctor philosophy. So that's just the kind of doctor who's, um, who's qualified to tell a dying person that you know, death is inevitable and defines life and, you know, and all that stuff, not to actually save their life. Uh, so um, I guess, but I think, again, I don't know. I suspect this came out of the road interview because there's a different group of people, right? And there were actually a bunch of these in, uh, in YouTube comments who were upset about the trans parts of that interview for the opposite reason, which is that, no matter how nice I was being about it, they did pick up on what my position was. And they didn't like that, right? You know, and I, and I think this woman was one of them. And and she, I guess, wanted to call up and demand to know why I don't think what she thinks and uh, proceeded to get very upset about it. Well, she's just a class reductionist, you know, reduce everything to the sex class. Uh, <laughs> that Sex class. This is not another one of those a, class reductionists. That is <laughs> such an interesting yeah. word, you know, sex class. Um, I mean, I guess if you just literally be a class like category, you know, then, uh, then anything could be anything could be a class. Uh, but um, I'm not sure how relevant all of them are, you know, in uh, in most contexts. And of course, also, I mean, a lot of my disagreement with this stuff is just that it's kind of a lot of it's just sort of classic, um, like identity politics stuff. I mean, even apart from the trans exclusionary. This, that you know that we you know there's you know, sort of like you can have movability for people who you know who meet certain you know identity criteria and whatnot which always just seemed kind of dumb to me that like I, I sort of think that uh you I mean you know if people want to have um associate together for the sake of you know doing group therapy or stuff like that that's one thing you know you share the same experience of surviving girlhood but uh but if you um but if you actually have a political movement to try to achieve things in the real world, it seems to me that uh, the more people that you have in it, the, the better off you are as a general rule that, you know, my understanding of how politics works is that, you know, stuff that has the support and participation of more people is more likely to happen than stuff that has some of the support and participation of fewer people. Uh, also, lots and lots of categories. <laughs> Are, are are have amorphous borders and have contested borders. You know, look at the debates the Knesset has once every you know two and a half years about you know what is a Jew. You know, look at uh, um, like there are there are a zillion examples like this. Uh, you know, do you you know are you only really a black person if you're you know an African descendant of slaves? You know, etc. 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 And also, by the way. I still think that like a religious analogy was pretty good because I think a religious discrimination lawsuit, like the fact that somebody considers themselves to be a Christian would probably be what would be more important than, you know, than whether or not, you know, they, they adhere to some theological dogma that, you know, that, that makes them a Christian according to some more substantive views. I think actually a lot of things are based on self-reporting. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron-exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron-exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>